We are still waiting for the results of the NTSB's investigation into the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others. And it could be up to a year before we have that final report. But we do know there was heavy fog in the Los Angeles area that day, and the pilot needed special permission to fly. Now, when pilots are flying in difficult weather conditions, they can experience a state of confusion that's called spatial disorientation. According to the FAA, it causes 5 to 10 percent of all general aviation accidents, 90 percent of which are fatal. Spatial disorientation was cited in the plane crash that killed JFK Jr., his wife Carolyn, and her sister. Aviation expert Julian Alarcon looks at what happens when even the most experienced pilots fly in compromised conditions. My name is Julian Alarcon. I'm the founder and one of the instructors of SimTech Aviation. SimTech Aviation is a flight simulator in Midtown Manhattan where pilots can come and supplement their flight training without leaving Manhattan. Special disorientation is when the body is given sensors to a pilot about what the airplane's doing, but in reality could be doing something different. Everything in flight training is done in reference to the horizon. The distance between the horizon and the nose of the aircraft is called an attitude. The horizon becomes the standard of what the airplane's doing. The visual system is the major component for our, our orientation. And when we lose the vision, now we gotta rely on the instruments. There's other factors that affect the pilot performance. And one, one of the major things is workload management or how, how many tasks are you handling? Let's take a, a flight, for example. Uh, threats on a flight or weather, airport condition, your health, and uh, your fatigue level, uh, problems at home, could be the passengers, uh, something wrong with the airplane. All those facts become a threat. And so we can take the weather, for example, the, we're flying along and visibility starts getting low. Now we're dealing with this is not going as planned. Therefore, we have to gather our thoughts. We have to come up with a solution. Special disorientation is more common when the pilot is going from flying with visual conditions and going into instrument conditions, losing the visual cues of looking out the window. Examples of losing visual reference could be flying in the clouds, uh, fog, um, haze, uh, pollution could also be a factor. Those are all things that will minimize the ability for the pilot to reference the horizon and, be, and fly the airplane in visual flight rules. And helicopters, the, 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 the helicopters fly at low altitudes, therefore they have to deal with power lines. That's, that's a big threat. So when you're, when you're not flying the airplane based on your instruments and you're flying the airplane based on your senses, that is called flying by the seat of your pants. And this is where you end up as a pilot, you end up in trouble. You think you're flying the airplane one way, the airplane is doing something different and the information that you're reading versus what your body's feeling is two completely different things. And depending on the state of the aircraft, it may be easy to recover. It could be very complex to recover out of the situation. Good evening, a dark day for America. John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife Carolyn, and her sister Lauren Bissett still are missing tonight. And it does now seem certain that they went down in the crash of a single engine plane that Kennedy was flying last night to Martha's Vineyard off Massachusetts. If we look, for example, at the accident with JFK Jr., there was a lot of factors. It was at night, he was ill, he had an ankle problem. The airplane was a new airplane to him. And he was flying over the water at night, which can reduce the, the, the ability to see the horizon. When a pilot encounters spatial disorientation, it's very easily that the pilot can overcorrect. Therefore, the most important thing the pilot should do is take a step back, analyze what the airplane is telling them, read the instruments, look at their attitude indicator, go back to the foundation of their training and fly the airplane first. Big corrections doesn't get you anywhere. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.